fans welcome to part one of episode nine of the big group one racing show for the racing season of 2016 slash 17 now on part one of episode nine i'm going to be previewing two of the four group ones that are being ran at flemington on saturday as part of victoria derby day it's the first day of the Melbourne Cup Carnival for 2016. It's just absolutely massive this next week. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight in, starting with the Coolmore Stud Stakes. So I start off with the first Group 1 of Victoria Derby Day, and that is the Coolmore Stud Stakes. A lot of talented sprinters in this 10-horse field. I tell you what, it was hard to try and pick my tips for this race. In fact, for all the races, it was quite difficult. But this one, I tell you what, it's a very special field. I reckon this is one of the best we've had in the Coolmore Stud Stakes for a while. Let's have a look at the field, shall we? Of course, the race will be ran at 2.25pm at Flemington. Of course, the whole coverage of uh, Victoria Derby Day can be seen on 7racing.com and also uh, Sky Racing 1. Uh, 7 has the best coverage, though, in my opinion. Extreme choice, favourite, $3.30. Not by much, though. As Stern's not far behind, $3.90. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if a Stern takes the favouritism somewhere uh, over the next couple of days before Victoria Derby Day. Star turn, four fifty. Capitalist, the Golden Slipper winner of 2016, $11. Russian Revolutions at $12 as well as Flying Arty coming off a good win in the Blue Sapphire. Uh, Cezino is uh, at $34. Durin's at $41. We then have Archives at $41. And uh, we also have Milano, the New Zealand horse, at $101. So let's now get into the field in depth. Number one in the Coolmore Stud Stakes field, we have Capitalist, uh, who of course won the Golden Slipper earlier in the year in Sydney. Was scratched from the Manicato Stakes last Friday due to wet weather. Of course, the wet weather uh, to the trainer's eye just doesn't suit this horse. It's First run in Melbourne this Saturday in the Coolmore Stud Stakes. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes in uh, on the big track of Flemington. Uh, of course, third in its last start behind Russian Revolution and Astern. Uh, and just a bit of a stat for you, only two horses have won the Coolmore Stud Stakes and the Golden Slipper in the same year, and that was 1991 Tears and just most recently 2011 Sepoy. So can Capitalist become the third horse to have won both the Golden Slipper and the Coolmore Stud Stakes in the same year. I reckon it could. It's definitely a good chance of placing very highly in this race. Number two, we have Mick Price trained extreme choice. Craig knew it will take the ride as he has done for his last three runs. Uh, won its last race, uh, the Moyer Stakes, which was uh, in the late stages of September, has won five of its last six races has been in very good form and in fact had a great trial run at Flemington last week and looked superb so I reckon this horse of course it is the favorite at the moment it's a big chance to take out the Coolmore Stud Stakes is in great form it can run the distance I have no complaints I reckon this horse will be high up the front in the field possibly first Number three is Astern, uh, who came 11th in the Golden Slipper, uh, beaten by Russian Revolution last start, but only just. It nearly nicked the win, Astern, but Russian Revolution was able to hold on, who actually led that race for the whole duration. Uh, 
It did beat Star Turn in the Golden Rose. Of course, Star Turn is one of the other favourites in this race. It is its first run in Melbourne, though, so that's the big question. Barrier 8, no concern there. I think it will do well from this barrier. It's definitely one of the chances, of course. The concern is its first run in Melbourne and whether it can handle the Flemington track. I think it might be high up there, though. Definitely top five uh, worthy. Number four, we have Flying Artie, who came third in the Golden Slipper and then went on a 207-day spell and then returned in the Blue Sapphire Stakes at Caulfield to win that out of the 12-horse field. Won it in fine fashion. There's a couple of things that do, do let this horse down, though. Of course, Damien Oliver supposed to be aboard this horse, but, of course, the suspension has meant that uh, he can't ride. So Huey Bowman has taken uh, the ride for this race, and uh, he'll do very well, I reckon, on this horse. It's definitely a talented horse, no doubt about that. The Barrier 1... Uh, is a concern. It's coming out of barrier one for the Cornwall Stud Stakes. That's a little bit of a concern for me, but I think it could be high up there. It's definitely a chance to win this race. It normally does well. Number five is Star Turn, the third favourite in the Cornwall Stud Stakes for 2016. Dwayne Dunn takes the ride as opposed to the last start where Craig Williams was on board. That was a win over the 1,100 metres. Hasn't won beyond that though, so that's the uh, the question there and the query. Also, it's first run at Flemington as well. Coming out of Barrier 4, it is definitely one of the chances though because it's coming off some great form. Um, it's won uh, four of its last uh, five starts and the other one was second, so it's in good form coming into this this uh, race. Number six is Russian Revolution. A big chance for this horse, I reckon. Uh, led most of the way in its last start and uh, was able to hold off Astern and also beat Capitalist as well. So it's coming off a great win over the 1200 metres. I wouldn't say it was a great win, actually. It uh, was only just. He was lucky to hold on this horse. But um, I'll tell you what, if it does that again, uh, takes the lead early and, and gets away and, and is able to lead down the straight. This horse is uh, more than a chance. The speed map does suggest it should be out early, so uh, it could play out the same again, just like uh, the last race, but uh, Astern will be coming, I reckon, a bit stronger than last time. Number seven is Saraceno, six in its last run in the Caulfield Guineas over the 1,600 metres back at the 1200 metres at Flemington where it won its last race in the Dane Hill. That was over the 1200 metre distance. Can run well at its best over the 1200 metre distance. So I expect this horse to do well. It could do well. It's coming out of barrier five. Of course it will. It will be difficult for this horse to take it up to some of the quality in this race but uh, you can't rule it out. Number eight is Archives. Uh, came second to Saraceno a couple of starts back in that same race I just mentioned uh, just a second ago. Uh, that was two starts back. Uh, won its last over the 1200 metres in the Red Anchor Stakes at Mooney Valley in the uh, later stages of October, 22nd of October, to be exact. In fact, that was Cox Plate Day. Uh, Craig Williams uh, takes the ride for this race. You can't rule that, I don't reckon. Number nine, we have Darien. Uh, hasn't won over the 1,200 metres and uh, was uh, beaten in the Blue Sapphire Stakes. Came third. Uh, Flying Artie, of course, won that race. Uh, that was at Caulfield on uh, Wednesday, the 12th of October. Of course... Um, Look, he can't rule it out, but I don't give this horse uh, much of a chance. It has its doubts, of course. Uh, there's a, f a bit more quality in this race than this horse, but you can't rule it out. Uh, hasn't won over the 1,200 metres, though. And then finally, number 10, we have Manello Blanick. Uh, Stephen Arnold will be the jockey for uh, on this horse for this race. Uh, Barrier 6 came fifth in the blue. Sapphire Stakes, uh, of course, Flying Artie won that one. Durain came third. Uh, so beaten by those two horses over the 1,200 metres. Back at the 1,200 metres at Flemington. I have my doubts for this horse, unfortunately. Of course, it's way down the odds, uh, as you uh, saw at the start of this preview. OK, time now for my tips for the Coolmore Stud Stakes for 2016. I did mention that uh, it was quite hard putting together my tips for this race. Uh, there's at least five or so horses who are actually genuine chances to actually take out this race. So... Really, any one of these horses could win it, but um, Extreme Choice, I think it's the one that stands out for me, most certainly. Uh, it's in good form coming into this race. The only doubt I have is the Golden Slipper, where it came eighth, um, of course, uh, beaten by uh, some of these horses who actually ran in the Golden Slipper. But back at Flemington, at Melbourne, 
should be uh, should be in superb form going into this race, and uh, also had a great trial run last week. Of course, that Moya Stakes win after the uh, after the spell it had, uh, that Moya Stakes win was a very very good win at Mooney Valley a few weeks ago. Beat the likes of Jatakwa, Buffering, and and horses like that. So back at the twelve hundred meters, uh, stepping up from the thousand meters from the Moya Stakes, but I reckon. This horse normally does well. In fact, uh, one five of its last six, I reckon it's got this. Extreme Choice is my uh, first placed horse for the Cool Moore Stud Stakes of 2016. Second, I've gone with Flying Artie. Um, won its last race in the Blue Sapphire a couple of weeks ago at Caulfield over the 1200 metres. Third in the Golden Slipper. Um, and then the uh, the races before then, Blue Diamond came second uh, and then first in its last couple of races before then. Like I said, barrier one's a concern for me, but um, I don't think it's uh, that much of a concern that it won't be up the front. I think it will be. Uh, the speed map uh, is uh, basically suggesting that it will be in the, uh, the back of the field early, but um, hopefully it can find a way to, uh, to get up the front in the, uh, the later stages. I reckon it will. I think it's a great horse. And, of course, uh, Huey Bowman on board instead of Damien Oliver. Of course, uh, Oliver would have been the preferred, but Huey Bowman will ride this horse well, like he did with Winx, and uh, probably not as good as uh, what he did with Winx, of course. Winx is someone else, but um, I think, um, I think um, yeah, I think Flying Artie is second for me. And then finally, uh, Stern came uh, third in my tips. Uh, I think uh, 11th in the Golden Slipper, obviously that was a hiccup there, but since then it's came uh, first in the Golden Rose and then most recently only second, uh, just beaten by Russian uh, Revolution, of course, came late. Maybe should have uh, went a bit too, maybe should have went earlier than what it did. Uh, and maybe it would have got Russian Revolution and won that race. So I think uh, Astern third for me. Uh, we'll definitely go close to the other two horses, Flying Artie and Extreme Choice, but I just think those two horses at Flemington are in better form. And, of course, uh, this horse is going to Melbourne for its first run. But it's a very good horse. It's in good form. Three of its last five races, it's won. I think it'll come third. It'll definitely be there at the finish. And then my roughy of the race, it was really a toss-up between Capitalist and uh, Russian Revolution. I've decided to go Russian Revolution just because I thought its run last start wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Of course, like I said uh, just before, if Astern uh, went a bit earlier than what it did with speed down the straight, I reckon it would have got Russian Revolution. But I think Russian Revolution did very well to hang on to win that race. So... It can happen again, no doubt about it. And this horse has some great speed at the front early. So it will be there early. It will be up the front early. I think it might be able to sustain some good pace going down the straight. Of course, there's a lot more quality in the field than its last run. But who knows? It's a very good horse. And I think um, I think this horse is a very good shot of, uh, of, of, of winning it. I wouldn't be surprised. But... Um, it's just a roughie for me. I think it's it's worth a dollar each way, no doubt about it. Okay, time now for the next group one on the program, and that is the uh, Maya Classic over the 1,600 metre distance, a race for three-year-olds and upwards, of course, weight for age and set weight race. We have a look at the odds here, of course, this race starting at 5 past 3 p.m. First seal... Heads the uh, the odds there with favoritism on four dollars and sixty cents. Uh, Whispering Brook and Dixie Blossoms level on six fifty. We then have Don't Doubt Mama at seven fifty. Danish Twist at ten dollars. Euro Angel at fifteen dollars. Heavens Above at seventeen dollars. I'm a Star at twenty one dollars. Serene Majesty is at twenty six dollars level. On odds with Pearls and Rising Romance. French Emotion also on $26. Dan Magic $31. Pure Pride on $35. And then Zanbra is the uh, the largest horse on the largest odds with $61. So uh, there you have it. That is the odds. Let's now get in to the field. Number one is good old Rising Romance, the six-year-old mare, of course, a female, and uh, came second in the Memsies over the 1,400-metre distance earlier on in the spring racing carnival in August. Uh, uh, 1,600 metres uh, at Flemington, two starts back in the, uh, the Maccabi Diva, it came seventh. Uh, you can't rule it out, but it has to be at its best, and I, you know, it hasn't really got a win for a while, so I can't see it being up there at the front, but um, who knows? 
Number two, we have First Seal, who can run the 1600 metre distance. Uh, came first last start at Caulfield over the 1400 metre distance. It's in building form at the moment, uh, so I do expect it to build on from the form here and do very well in the Maya Classic. Uh, barrier one, however, is it a concern? I'm not quite sure. I did say in the uh, the last preview in the Coolmore Stud Stakes that uh, Flying Artie Barrier one was a concern. Might just be a bit of a concern for First Seal, but um, I think it uh, it still will be there in the top five. Number three, we have Zanbra, of course, uh, a horse that uh, is at largest odds of the race uh, with 61 dollars as I mentioned before coming out of barrier five in this race came fifth in its last start over the 1600 meter uh, distance Dixie Blossoms actually won that race and uh, that horse is in this uh, race so um, it hasn't won uh, since March 2016 which was last prep and uh, it's not in the best form so I uh, have my doubts here for this horse. At number four we have Danish Twist who has uh, came third in two of its four starts this prep uh, fifth last start uh, to Pels and First Seal. Uh, she was uh, way back uh, though, I thought. Uh, she was pressing on uh, later on, but she was a bit far back from those two horses. Better start and maybe a chance, I reckon. Uh, of course, it did get a bit of a poor start and wasn't up there until the end of the race, but if it can get up midway, uh, is as opposed to right back, it might be in with a shot, but hasn't won over the 1600 metres, so that is a concern. Number five, we have Heavens Above. Uh, its last two starts was well out of the top five. Uh, came sixth and seventh in its last two starts. Seventh in the Epson over the 1600 metre journey. That was its last start at Royal Ramwick. Uh, had a good prep uh, last prep though, so uh, if you can take that uh, form into account, uh, then it's worth a shot. It's a possible chance in my opinion. Has won over the 1600 metre distance before, has that win range. It's in with a chance. Barrier 15 though. Number six is Chris Waller's French Emotion. Six in its last start, but back behind the top three and four. Uh, has uh, won at Flemington over the six, over the 1400 metres rather at, uh, in the blazer. Uh, so uh, that was two starts uh, back. So back at Flemington, running over the 1600 metres. Um, maybe a chance, maybe a chance. Number seven is Don't Doubt Mama, the fourth favourite of the race. Won two of its last three starts this prep, including the stocks over 1600 metres at Mooney Valley. That was its last start. It's definitely one of the chances. Had a, has a win range of, uh, of 1,000 to 1,600 metres. Uh, Dwayne Dunn on board has been aboard this horse its last two starts where it's done very, very well. Do not count this horse out of your top three. I reckon this horse is going to be in the top three in the Maya Classic. Number eight, we have Serene Majesty came uh, fourth last start in the Lady Vars at Caulfield on Blue Sapphire Stakes Day. Didn't do too badly in the end to claim fourth. It was well back, but it did very well to claim fourth. I think, um, I think uh, coming into this race, it may be one of the chances, uh, maybe one of those ones to watch, but Euro Angel did beat it last start over the 1600 metres and of course Euro Angel is in this race so not really sure where to place it but it's one of those chances. John O'Shea teams up with James McDonald once again for number nine Pels uh, coming out of barrier 12. Its last win was in the Toy Show which was in August at Royal Ramwick. Uh, third its last two starts. Uh, both of those were over the 1400 metre distance. Uh, coming to the big track of Flemington for the first time is definitely the question, but um, this horse seems to be doing okay in its last two starts. Whether it can handle the big track of Flemington, though, is a bit of a question, but I think it's one of the chances to watch out for. Number 10, we have Dixie Blossoms, second or third in three of its last five starts. Its last start, it came first at Royal Ramwick over the 1600 meter journey. I think this horse is in some good form coming in to this race. It is having a fantastic prep which is very very good um, and with at the value that it's at uh, at uh, $6.50 I think it goes into uh, this race with some value and is one of the chances. Number 11 we have Dan Magic. Uh, this horse is a funny horse this one. Looks in uh, good position form without actually winning if that makes sense. Uh, uh, because in its last uh, five races, or three races, it's came uh, fourth. So, 
it's um, it's in some good form without actually winning, which is very, very interesting. Her, uh, her best could surprise all. Maybe she could be one of the real roughies of this race. Number 12, we have Euro Angel in its last five starts. Two of those have come, is, this horse has come second, and the other two it's come first. Uh, Lady Vass, a winner a few weeks ago on Blue Sapphire Stakes Day, beat a couple of the horses in this race. Looks in good form, looks promising, has the win range. Coming out of Barry 11, Zach Person on board. I think this horse is going to be up there as well. I reckon I'd slot it in there with the value it's at as one of the roughies of, uh, of the Maya Classic. Number 13, we have Pure Pride. Craig Williams uh, is aboard this horse. Hasn't won over the 1600 metre journey. Coming out of Barrier 7, came flashing home to come second on Turnbull Stakes Day. French Emotion won that race over the 1400 metres in the Blazer. Uh, it did finish uh, very late with a flashing, uh, a flashing effort. So. Uh, whether it can do that on uh, on this day though in the uh, Maya Classic and win, I'm not quite sure because there's a lot more quality and it's a tougher race uh, in the Maya Classic. Number 14 we have Whispering Brook uh, came third in the Caulfield Guineas uh, last start over the 1600 metre journey at Caulfield. Might be up the front uh, but this is definitely a tougher race, uh, definitely the Maya Classics a tougher race than the Caulfield Guineas. There's a lot more quality in this race than what the Caulfield Guineas had. So the speed map suggests that this horse will be up the front early. Whether it can lead the whole way, I'm not too sure. I reckon it might just get caught, but it's definitely up there as one of the chances. Number 15, we have I Am A Star, third over the 1600 metre distance in the Classic at Mooney Valley. Nurse Kitchen won that on uh, Matacado Stakes Night last Friday night came second in the uh, the thousand guineas over the uh, 1600 metre distance at Caulfield. Uh, definitely a chance if it runs at its best, but this uh, race is definitely uh, more tougher than the races it's actually ran in. So of course, uh, its best form is uh, going to actually be tested. Um, but it's definitely up there. I could say that. Okay, well time now for my tips. Once again, it was very hard to collect a. Uh, a total of three horses for my first, second and third tips. Uh, this is a very strong field of, uh, of 13 horses or what is it, 15 horses, sorry. So I tell you what, it was very, very hard but I've decided to go with uh, Don't Doubt Mama for first. I think this horse is in some good form as won its last two races. Its last was over the 1600 metre journey which was at Mooney Valley. Barry 13 is a bit of a concern for me but it's, you know, maybe it's a bit too wide, but um, then again, um, this horse has um, has has done well from, from uh, funny barriers. So I won't use the barrier for excuse. I think this horse is going to do well in this race. I think it will come first for me. Second is Dixie Blossoms. I think this horse is in great form too. Has uh, come second or third in three of its last five starts. So that defines that this horse is in some great form coming into this race and of course first last start over the 1600 metres uh, that was at 320 odds it's at uh, 650 odds in this race I, could, I couldn't go past this horse I think it's in some good form and it's in some deserved form going in to the Maya Classic so second for me Dixie Blossoms and then third I've got number two first seal the favourite at $4.60 uh, favourite by about $2 uh, with a gap between uh, first seal and uh, Whispering Brook and Dixie Blossoms uh, uh, of course one last start hasn't um, hasn't recently won over the 1600 metres in its last 1600 metre race it was in the Doncaster and came 12th out of the 15 so I question a little bit whether it can actually go back to that 1600 metre distance and do well but it's in some great form and um, I'm going to tip it at third I reckon it will be there to get a place and then the roughie of the race I've given it to Euro Angel uh, in its five starts it's came second uh, two of those and the other two it's came first and then the other one it came sixth uh, I think it's in good form. It's looking promising. Lady Vass, winner of a couple of weeks ago on uh, Blue Sapphire Stakes Day. I reckon uh, this horse is a show. It looks promising. It's worth a dollar each way bet, I reckon, at $15. Uh, I think that's good value for uh, this horse, considering uh, the potential it can produce. So Euro Angel, my roughie of the race for the Maya Classic. And that is it for part one of episode nine. Of course, my Victoria Derby Day preview of course don't forget to stay tuned to check out 
my uh, Victoria Derby Day preview part two will include of course the Derby itself and also the Catalla Stakes as well that's going to be a very interesting race with United States, States etc uh, participating in that race so uh, do stay tuned like comment and share this video subscribe see you soon bye for now